good morning everybody out there in Schooner Channel 1390 land. It's the Schooner Morning Show. I'm your host Mark Prevo and I am very excited today for our guest is Sharon McGilvery in apartment 417 right here in the Camden building. She's right next to the coffee bar and Sharon I see you every day. I, but I don't drink coffee. I know, I know, but that's all right. You're out checking the mail or I'm, out. I'm checking the mail, out taking a walk. Right, right. Especially since I'm not a win. I grew up in Auburn, and I'm, but I'm not a winter person. No. And I would prefer to walk in the corridors. Oh, my wife and I Saturday stopped everything we were doing in the house, and we just sat by the window. And watch the snow come down. I will admit it was pretty. It, or it was is pretty. just beautiful. And I, I had to take a short video and send it to my relatives in Florida because they were always teasing me about the weather in Florida being so nice. Yeah. And they said it was 75. It was kind of cool. They didn't want to go in the pool. Aww. But uh, my cousin said that it actually brought a tear to her eye because she misses the snow. It just doesn't feel like Christmas down there. Well, my sister told me that one of my nephews, both of them live in Connecticut, both of the nephews live in Connecticut, but one of them only had rain. Right. And um, he didn't have any snow. Right. And I have a feeling that the other one didn't have much. And they never have snow in Florida. Santa comes and, by, and by and motorboat. And yours in Florida, so. Yeah. yeah. They decorate the palm trees. I mean, it just doesn't, yeah. it just doesn't rain. I, I think we're very lucky here to have three, four seasons. I will admit three, it's pretty. Is it three seasons or four? How many seasons there's do four, we have in there's there? There's four. Four seasons, okay. <laughs> it may so. seem like three before we get through. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where were you born? I was born at CMG in Lewiston, and I have always lived in Aub Auburn, Maine. Auburn. And um, except for the time that I was in college, which was, I went to University of Maine, Machaya, so I was down east. Ah. And um, for four years. But other than that, I've always lived in Auburn. How did it feel going from Auburn, Maine to Machias, Maine? It's because it's a smaller community. And I can remember shortly after I had been there one weekend, um, going for a walk um, a couple of miles. That was in the days when I could walk a couple of miles. <laughs> um, a couple of miles just to see what it was like because my p mother even though I didn't know the relatives had relatives from down east and um, so there is some background that's down east right right it, it is a very small community yeah. Machias and uh, the downtown is very small and that college is up on the hill I the think college is, you're is coming up on in. the hill yeah and it's Machias, if you aren't there for the college, is famous for Helen's Restaurant, yes. which used to be in one location, which got moved over the years to a different location. I think it burned down and then I rebuilt it or it, But it, something it's like a that. different location now. Yeah. yeah. And it's still, according to friends of mine, the cooking is still good. Very good. Yeah. My wife and I try to get to Machias at least once a year Yeah. Um, to go eat at Helen's, and there's a a uh, beautiful little motel that we love up there uh, that is uh, it's small it's only 12 rooms in the whole place but they're newly renovated and the beds are extremely comfortable and the floors got radiant heat in it and it, it's just amazing and we love down east I mean it, it really is a beautiful part of Maine yeah it is yeah and you're not far from the coastline and uh, so you must have enjoyed your college years up there you got I a did. lot of studying done I did do some studying. <laughs> some studying? <laughs> okay. I studied to be a teacher, but I didn't end up being a te teacher. That just wasn't my um, calling. Right. I ended up um, working at the Auburn Public Library for 40 years in various departments. APL for APL. 40 years. Wow. There's only one person that I know of and I still keep in touch with him, um, who worked there a few more years than I did. Wow. He started a little later than I did, but he yeah. worked a few more years. A few more I years, did. yeah. That is amazing, so. to be in one location and work for one place that yeah. long. People, several, several directors, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
But I mean, that was the norm years ago. The yeah. normal was you got your job and your career and you took it for whatever it was for as long as it would be. And uh, today, if, if these millennials stick with a job for a year or two, that's a long time for them. Yeah. I have a very good friend who is on his third job since getting out of college and he's only 30. Yeah. So it's almost like every two years he, he gets tired or bored and is looking for some greener pastures, I guess you would say. Well, Wonderful young man, though. Anybody would be lucky to have him on their team. So, I, there, you, When you think of the library, you think of you know, going to get books or going to a program, but there are various departments, especially the bigger libraries. I mean, if you have a small library here in the state, there may not be, but different processes that have to be done. So there are different departments, and I worked in several of them before I got through. Libraries have become our center of information, right? I mean, right. if you don't have the internet, you can go there to get it. Or you if, can call them, and they will look. One of my memories of here, and I don't know that I ever met the woman, was a woman who lived here. Who, who near the end of my working at the library would call me with question. Well, if you work in a facility like that, you don't, even if you think you know the answer off the top of your head, give them the answer off the top of your head. You look it up and you call the person back. To make sure it's accurate. Yeah, to make sure it's accurate. We'll talk. So, so Dorothy Prince, who was oh. the woman who lived here, would call me with questions that were her kind of question, but a little bit different than something that um, some of the others would ask me. Right. And I would look, them up, look up the answer and give her a call back. You know, I was going to wait till we got off, off the air to ask you if that's who the tenant was, because of all the people that lived here, she would be the one that would call the yeah. library. Because I remember her telling me that she was going to call the library to double check on something. Yeah. Um, that is amazing. That's amazing. There, there is so much to learn. Yeah. Uh, now with the internet, boy, everybody just asks Alexa or they look it up online or you know, you, you have your computer and it's so easy to just... That's probably, except for this weekend when we lost the power here for six hours and one of the girls came in this morning and and help me reboot it. Yeah. Um, is one of the best purchases I made this last. That few months. is great to hear. That's great to hear, and it took some persuading, if I remember right. Primarily, primarily because although I know basically how to use a computer, I never wanted one at the house because I didn't know how to troubleshoot it if something went wrong. And now, living in this facility, and I would say it to anyone else who lives here, if you don't, if you have something go wrong with it, ask an employee because they will refer you to somebody who can help you. Right, right. No. Yeah, and you know, I think we're all in the same boat. I don't think any one of us is an expert, but as you know, better than most, the more you do something, the better you become at it. Right. right. If you're using the computer all the time, you've encountered that before and you remember how to do it. That's a good uh, point. Those of you that uh, do have electronic devices, if anything is giving you trouble, don't hesitate to reach out and call someone here at Schooner and we'll come up and take a look at it and see if we can uh, fix it. I think I've fixed three things today already. So um, please don't hesitate to let us know if you need any help. Right. Right. Yeah. And with that power surge we had this weekend um, from the storm, you may find, encounter something that you didn't expect to encounter and haven't encountered before this. Exactly. That's right. A lot of the time with electronics, you just have to unplug them from the wall and break that elect electric circuit that's going through from the electricity in the wall to the item. It's not just a matter of shutting it off, but it's actually unplugging it. For 10 seconds to break that that connection and then it kind of resets itself it's amazing it's amazing so tell us a little bit more about you what did you do for fun where what did you do in your spare time what did i do in my spare time i've always been 
fairly active in the United Methodist Church here in Auburn. Um, in fact, I still have a membership secretary over there. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm there every day. Obviously, I'm not. Um, but I can do um, things, send cards if I have to, or yeah, thing um, from here. Um, and you've been a member of quite a few things. If I'm also a member, of, more so on cards. I'm also a member of Eastern Star, which is an offshoot of the Masonic organization. Right. And I also that one is really the one that I took on taking, sending cards to people who are um, going through death, um, sympathy cards, or get well cards, or things like that. Right. Um, and here again, I found it was something I could do here. Sure. I just had to order the cards because I don't have, I don't go out and go shopping. Right, right. Thanks to the virus. Well, yeah, you could <laughs> if it wasn't for that. But, you know, like I always say, though, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And, um, yeah, so between church and Eastern Star, and I have been fairly active. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, being a long-term employee of the Auburn Public Library, you must be a informationaholic. You must love to read and I do like to read. Watch the news. I, I, and I like to read. I like to watch the news. I have found in the last nine months that I've been doing word searches. Not only the ones that they pass out here at Schooner, but the one I have a couple of books that have word searches oh, in yeah. them. So I do. Those. In yeah. fact, I think I've done two today or one and a half. Are you a fan of PBS, public television? Not, I have watched it, but not so much as... Because they have, they have three TV. channels, and I don't think everybody realizes there's not only Channel 10, but up in the upper channels, and I'm not sure where they are, but there's a channel called Create and a channel called The World, which are two other channels that public television... Uh, operates and my wife and I are on those three channels yeah I would say most of our television watching time they're just so interesting so much information so I find you know it, it, it occupies time I do miss as a lot of the I know a lot of you are missing getting out with other people um, sitting in the living room and talking to somebody else right well, all of our staff are being tested as we speak uh, here on Tuesday morning that uh, they're being tested again and we're hoping to know by the end of the week and John is hoping that we can lift some of these based on rules and guidelines to at least let people gather a little bit uh, here and there because I, I know it can be uh, pretty lonely in the room. but. As long as we're wearing masks and keeping say, our distance. Let's make sure you wear wear your mask. Right. I mean, Mark's got his on his table, and it's I've got right mine here in my lap. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And and if it weren't for for this, we're still pretty far apart, and we're not directly facing each other while we talk, so things work out fairly and we've well. Got this nice big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so right there. Uh, tell me, what would you what would you want? your friends and neighbors here at Schooner to know about you or, or hobby-wise or passions or different things that you enjoy that you might share with a friend or a neighbor here at Schooner? I would say read, reading and um, the word search at this point. Yeah. Um, and just good old-fashioned camaraderie. And yeah. Sharing stories and experiences yeah. and talking with people and enjoying you know, things and I know you used to come out with us when we'd go and when we used to go out for rides I used to go out for the rides yeah yeah so and we'll get there again don't when we've lose. gone down to um, yeah uh, Harpswell I used to I like that because yeah. I used to grow up I grew up going down to Harpswell, down the Bailey Harpswell. Island yeah, so. yeah. Auburn was uh, down there a lot. As a matter of fact, there is a little community in Hopswell called New Auburn, right? Where a lot of folks. It's it's called the, the Auburn Colony. Yeah. yeah, the Auburn Colony. That's right. Well, painless, nothing to it. Nothing to it. Yeah. Hurt. Yeah. Great. 
Going to be your turn coming up soon. Give me a call if you're ready to come and be interviewed. Every Tuesday and Thursday mornings, we can interview anytime and record it to play it at those times. So until we meet again, this has been the Schooner Morning Show with your host, Mark Prevo, and our guest today, Sharon McGilvery in Apartment 417. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. You're welcome.